Good evening. Hello. You're gonna... Hi, Barbara. Hello. Both Barbaras. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi from a Barb. <laughs> Hi, Barb. Hey, Claudia. Hi, Gloria. Hello. Can you hear me, Ann? Hear me, Ann. Good. Hey, Claudia. Hey, Gloria. Good to see you. Good to see everyone.
Hey, hey, everyone. Oh. Good evening. I think we'll get started in a few minutes. Um, if our PSEP members can just uh, private message me and let me know that they're here so I can make sure to call on everyone, that would be super helpful. I know we got a lot of new faces in here. Taji, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Mr. Chicago in the building. Good. Yeah, we're known for our bad lighting. It's not bad, it's just subtle, and I'm going for the same look. Makayana, Gloria, I'm here. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Lakiana, were you talking? You're on mute. I was, but I was um, on the phone. Um, but let's get this party started. I want to welcome everyone to the September 2021 Portland Committee on Community Engaged Policing PSEP meeting. Um, thank you all for being here. It's officially fall. Uh, a lot of work to do going on around the city. Um, what comes to my mind is the, the gun violence. It's at record highs here. It doesn't make it any better, but it's uh, nationally um, also very high. So it's not just something that we're experiencing here in Portland. Um, I know our committee has been really active on a lot of fronts, both in our professional work and on PSEP to work on these things. I know we've been uh, meeting with different parts of PPB and a lot of different branches. So excited to share what we've been working on and get some updates from what we've been doing on uh, in August. Um, just so everyone's aware, uh, Taji's the other co-chair and I've stepped in to kind of carry out Elliot's, uh, the rest of Elliot's term. Elliot was the former uh, co-chair and he stepped off at the end of August. So um, that's kind of where we're at with things. Um, I'm just going to do a little, little roll call. If you could please just introduce yourself um, on PSEP, your, your name, uh, your pronouns, and what subcommittee you belong to uh, would be great. And I'll start with Taji. Hello, everyone. I'm Taji Chestnut, as Lakiana mentioned. I use he, him pronouns. 
and I wait. That was pretty much it. I am the co-chair of PSEP as well with Lakiana. Apologize, I just got out of class as well, so just getting all into so here. Excited to be here tonight, though. Thank you. Uh, could I pass it to Anne? Hi, everyone. Anne Campbell. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm on the steering committee and settlement and policy committee. And I would like to um, pass it to Gloria. Right. My name is Gloria Kenson. I use he, she pronoun, and I'm on the youth committee. And I will pass it to, is it Tia? Whoops. Okay, I'm back. Thank you. Yes, I'm Tia. I use she, her pronouns. I am a fairly new member to the Behavioral Health PSAP subcommittee. Welcome, Tia. It's great to have you. Um, is Vadim here? Uh, Vadim just messaged me. He said that he can make it, uh, something come up. Um, but we have Byron here. Okay, awesome. Byron, my guy, go ahead. Uh, hold on. The video is taking a second. Uh, my name is Byron Vaughn. Uh, my pronouns, I guess, are I have a, what I usually say, I have a mission, a calling, and a purpose. And I'm on the behavioral subcommittee, behavioral health subcommittee. And I'm a new member of the PSAP member. Of, committee thank you thank you um just going down our list amy good evening everyone amy anderson here chair of the behavioral house subcommittee uh welcome to our meeting tonight thank you amy uh is zainab here Hey, Britt. Uh, how about Celeste? Celeste should be here later. Cool. Okay. I think that's uh, everyone who is here. So we're going to open up with uh, reports. So these are our subcommittees and also uh, PPB, uh, Portland Police Bureau staff, uh, PSEP staff, and the mayor's office. We will start with the behavioral health subcommittee. Amy, that's you. Okay, we're going to pop back to her and we'll go with the youth subcommittee. I'm not sure if that's you, Gloria. I'm on the youth committee. Theo, okay. would you like for me to speak? Absolutely. Uh, so this is just the, the brief recap of what we did at the subcommittee. Yes. We decided first that we needed to um, recruit more youth for the committee. And we didn't know where we were as far as how many youth were still on the committee, but I'm glad to see that, um, is it, uh, Byron? Yes. Is here? No. Yes, I'm here. No, this was a youth committee. Are you on the youth committee? No. No, no. Well, my name is Byron, Taji. so I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I had the wrong name. I'm sorry. It's Taji. Are you on the youth committee? Yes, I am. And are you going to continue with us? Yes, I have been. Uh, just didn't make this last month's meeting. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's good to know. Need to get in touch with you. Well, my my charge was to check with Mount Hood Community College and see if they still had a community involvement program, which they don't. So students who would participate could foreseeably get credit but they don't have the program anymore. But I haven't checked with PCC Cascade. And I did check with the high schools 
And I think maybe I should leave that until I report to the youth committee. I reached out to um, Nike Love Green. And so um, I, I haven't talked to her yet. I left word for her to return the call to me. She was one of my students at Roosevelt. So I'm hoping she can steer us in the direction of more students. And that's about it. Thank you, Ms. Gloria. Um, yeah, I got a lot of connections too. So I should uh, oh, at some point hand those good. off to you all. Appreciate the update though. Um, I don't believe Celeste is here yet, so let's go with Ann with the steering committee, and then we'll, uh, or yeah, and then we'll go to Amy at the behavioral health. Hi, I can um, get the settlement and policy committee out of the way first, if that's all right. Yeah. 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 Um, the Dean, uh, Mazursky, and Zainab Folk and I are on that committee. And our meeting this last month, we talked about, um, we got an update on the um, settlement agreement um, mediation that's happening between the, the federal government, Department of Justice and the city. Um, we got that update and then Badim Mazursky talked about the possibility of, of uh, piece up looking into um, getting an accreditation, additional accreditation for the Portland Police Bureau. Um, we did decide to not move forward on that. Um, and uh, Zainab talked about some issues relative to a previous meeting regarding training. And so we're going to be doing an update on that at our next meeting. So that's the settlement and policy subcommittee. Perfect, and we're gonna keep the microphone right with you if you wanna give the steering committee uh, update as well. Yes, I can start with um, some of what we uh, talked about and then hopefully you and Taji can add. We talked about um, some of the items that we had on our August, um, uh, actually full board meeting. We didn't have quorum, so we discussed uh, bringing those issues back um, talking about the strategic plan um, and talking about the, um, the different, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong meeting there. I apologize. Um, we talked about the um, wanting to talk more about the codification, um, talk about the CRC statement that we had written and we'd like to have a vote on that this evening. Um, and we wanted to, um, we talked a little bit about the quarterly report. Do you have anything to add? We also talked about an additional idea that you had, Lakiana. So I'll let you go ahead with that. Um, the, the one on uh, the PPB um, community like forums? Yes. Yeah, so, um, we met with uh, Chief Frome, who's here on the call, as well as, Mar as, well as Mary Claire Buckley, uh, both in the Portland Police Bureau around this idea that kind of came out of what happens at PSEP. A lot of times there's events in the community, uh, police related events that um, take up a large amount of our time. There's always a lot of questions and I thought it would be great for a space to be created where community could ask questions and give input on large happenings, whether it's police, police involved shootings, whether it is um, rallies, such as the Proud Boy rally that happened last month or issues like the vaccine mandate with the city where community wants more information on it um, and wants to be able to give input or, or just hear. And I, and I see in the community a large gap, uh, information gap where people kind of assume facts based off of not having a space like this. Um, and so we just, we met yesterday and kind of talked about that and creating a partnership where PPB and PSIP would jointly host a community session online and maybe in person in some days. Um, Cause I think that one of the other things is that PSIP and PPB don't have many required things other than what's in the settlement agreement that's kind of just PSIP related but doesn't really engage the larger community. So I thought that that would be a great opportunity. So that's kind of in the pipeline. 
Um, the other major thing that I bring up at the PSET meeting that I think is more pertinent to our current work is changing the style of our steering committee meetings, which are a lot of times kind of like related to, they're kind of more updates. And I would like to use those steering committee meetings as more of like work time where we're actually working through a certain issue rather than just giving a, a list of updates of things that are happening um, so that we can kind of workshop through problems and things like that that might be impacting the committee as a whole, whether it's, for example, Gloria's idea about getting more youth, right? Maybe that's, instead of just saying, hey, the youth subcommittee said they need more youth and we discuss it and move on, why don't we actually take an idea like that and like actually spend the time in the steering committee working on it and yeah. kind of figuring out, you know, picking, an, picking a couple of things and using that time for that rather than just Kind of flagging issues and then doing more to get information from the other subcommittees about you know what's going on in their committees what are they doing well with what are they struggling with so we have a better sense because right now it's kind of um the information is kind of decentralized and it's kind of held within these um steering committee or not steering committee committee chairs but uh theo's actually going to bring up an idea that i think could help with this um so that's kind of what we discussed at the uh, steering committee. I don't know if Taji has any updates. Um, oh, and I think we'll have an opportunity tonight to discuss how that can kind of look in regards to the strategic plan when we do get a chance to vote on it. Um, yeah. Something like that. Um, I see that um, what uh, yeah. Ian Hattleman, uh, do you want to go ahead with that one? Yeah, so the uh, comment in the chat uh, from Dan Handelman with Portland Cop Watch is, I see there's not community input on this update section. We were wondering why no PPV folks were at either the settlement agreement slash policy or behavioral health subcommittee meeting. I'll have PPV answer that when they give their update. Um, I'm going to turn it over to PSEP staff to give theirs, then we'll go with PPV, and then we'll have the mayor's office uh, give their updates. Thanks, Lakiana. Um, so as a, as a staff update, the PSEP is, staff is working on securing a COVID contractor facilitate a strategic plan. Um, that'll be talked about later on, but uh, we wanted to get the ball rolling to, to try to fast track the, the process. Um, so it'd be an individual who is local and has skills, not only in facilitation, but also in creating deliverables. Um, the focus of piece of staff this month has been outreach as well as outreach. I got my video off. I can listen. And youth efforts, as well as uh, applicant recruitment. Um, so we've taken ads out in the Mercury uh, that went out today um, and we'll continue to run through the month as well as the regular social media channels. Um, we've additionally spoken to university students in classes and trying to increase the presence and participation specifically on the youth subcommittee. Um, so we're, aim we're also aiming to identify a confidential tracking system of PSEP related outreach instances, uh, which could be as simple as Excel or uh, more complicated if we need to make it so. Um, the last thing that Lakiana alluded to uh, that PSEP staff wanted to bring up is the November PSEP officer elections. Um, PSEP staff had, had a bunch of conversations around that. Um, and we would like to suggest an amendment to bylaws. Uh, we certainly can't do that. Obviously, it would be a conversation for PSEP members in the community, um, but we think it would be a more streamlined and equitable process if the uh, subcommittee chairs were actually the steering committee, mem steering committee members, so they were responsible for the, for the steering committee. Um, that would also create more buy-in on subcommittees and uh, more equitable representation uh, throughout the steering committee. Uh, because they'd all be speaking for their subcommittees. Um, so there's certainly precedent for that. Um, that happens throughout the city of Portland on their committees. Um, it also would never impede on group dynamics. Uh, so like it wouldn't ever get to like a popularity contest, not saying that it has uh, in the past, um, but it would never get to that. Um, and yeah, that's all, that's all we got for staff updates. Thanks for the time. Wait, Theo, I was, I was wondering where you said that idea came from, the final one you were talking about. 
Oh, that was just conversations with staff, uh, really. Uh, there was some conversations uh, about like a, a more streamlined process of a steering committee because other, other committees around the city just have their subcommittee chairs uh, as their steering committee members. Uh, that way there's um, kind of, there's not like a vote process, right? So there's not like a, a hierarchy system uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and that's just kind of the conversation that I thought I could throw out, but it would take a, a bylaw amendment um, so you all as PSEP members would have to uh, be interested in that and vote on it ultimately. But if there's not interest, then there's no use to, to bring it up. But I thought that I should bring it up sooner rather than later as we have November elections uh, coming pretty soon. Any other questions? Thanks. Theo, um, Theo, I'm just, I just need a little clarification. Let me see if I understood you right. I think your idea is genius. Um, basically, we eliminate the hierarchy, chair, co-chair, secretary, and we bring in everybody who chairs or co-chairs the subcommittees as one voice at like a round table, correct? That's right. They would make up the, the steering committee. Right now, it's also cumbersome because uh, there's, the different positions on the steering committee were great yes. at the very beginning. Yes. Um, but, and they, they certainly did awesome things. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to uh, say, suggest anything different because I would never do that. Uh, they did awesome things. Uh, the steering committee has, has thrived. Uh, I just think this is a more uh, equitable and streamlined uh, situation. This is a more collaborative situation because the hierarchy of chair and co-chair came out of Robert's Rules of Order. And that's how most organizations set up their stuff and it just was the way things are done. But PSEP is about upgrading and updating. And I think it's a great idea. And I vote to make a motion to uh, like amend or add that process. Because if we have to vote in November, then we need an amendment out for at least 30 days, according to basic rules, you know, for people to give notice on, give voice on, vote on. And we won't have enough time to implement by November if we don't do it now, because it's already October. This is the end of September. You see what I'm saying? We won't have 30 days to vet it to the community. Anytime you really change bylaws or make amendments or addendums, you got to give at least 30 days for public input. So if we launch it tonight, then we can launch it so people could provide public input and we can maybe bring it to order in November instead of trying to make a new chair and co-chair, you know, thing happen. Does that make sense to everyone? No. It makes sense, Amy. I do feel a little apprehensive to move forward tonight with agreeing that this is something public com something that's going to be public commented on. I think we need to follow the order that PCF typically has with any amendment changes, which would be then first to bring it up to the steering committee and then to, and we can still do this all before November. I'm not against any of that. I just wanted to say that I think we should have to table it for our beginning of August or geez, what month? October um, <laughs> uh, steering committee meeting. Does that sound okay? Yeah, totally. I just wanted to put out there about, you know, I didn't know if people need to comment. I just said it to make it whatever has to happen. I like that idea. I think it's something we can all work collaboratively together on and help each other grow our subcommittees and improve our work together. I think it's a wonderful idea. Thank you. Oh, and I guess um, I probably should do the update on the Behavioral Health Subcommittee, which I'm going to give to Barb to do because um, she's really good at it. So I'm going to turn everything over to Barb. Good evening. Hi, everyone. How are you? I am doing okay. And you? Welcome, good. Mr. Hardesty. Thank you for coming to our meeting tonight. I think she was on the phone, <laughs> so I, I pressed mute. <laughs> I thought she was my bad. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, does anybody want to hear the behavioral health 
Okay. No. All right. Absolutely. Go ahead. So I've got last month, this month, and next month. Last month was the hearing and the status update hearing. And I actually used my community time to give an overview of what the behavioral health subcommittee had done in the last year and a quarter or so. Um, and then this month at our September meeting, we welcomed new members and to the subcommittee and talked a little bit about what we want to, well, a lot about what we'd like to do going forward and started talking about coming up with a mission. And then next month, our meeting, I believe is on October 5th, the first Tuesday of the month from six to 7.30. And we're going to continue. We had started um, in August about the uh, talking about the Portland Police Bureau Wellness Program. And we had a presentation then. Um, and this next month, we are going to hear from the Employee Assistance Program with the idea in mind of working on some recommendations for the Portland Police Bureau Wellness Program. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy and Barb. Um, yes, yeah, so next we got, uh, who did I say, PPB, Portland Police Bureau? Hey, everybody. Mike Frome. Uh, use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm the deputy chief at the Portland Police Bureau. Uh, you can call me Mike. That is fine with me. Um, Assistant Chief Resch gave me some information that she wanted uh, me to convey to PSEP. It was a follow up on a question, I think, at the last meeting about uh, calls to 911 on August 22nd out near 122 at Prescott. So if you'll forgive me, I'm just going to read what she sent me. Um, in response uh, to PSEP's question, I requested from the Bureau of Emergency Communication calls for service in the area of the event. There were 14 calls for service. 10 callers were calling to inform 911 of the event and either stated they did not need police response or declined needing the police to respond when asked by the, uh, the dispatcher. One caller was angry the police were not on scene and stated their windshield had been damaged. When asked follow-up questions by the dispatcher for information, they hung up on the dispatcher. One caller complained the police were not on scene to prevent damage and wanted a call back from an officer. BUEC 911 placed the name and call back into the computer-assisted dispatch call for follow-up phone call. Uh, and then uh, me editorializing, I do not know if we actually ever called that person back. Um, one caller from the Chevron, from what sounds to be an employee, explained that people were throwing things near the gas station. The dispatcher told the caller the police are monitoring and to call back if anything further happens. And then one caller called in after they were out of the area to report their car had been damaged and wanted to file a report. An officer responded to their location, and this case is assigned to a detective and is part of the ongoing follow-up. Um, so that is the information uh, that AC Resch wanted me to convey back to PSAP. Um, any quick questions on that, or should I just keep going? Um, I do have a quick question, and thank you very much for that update. Um, you mentioned that you, you weren't sure if the Bureau had gotten back to that person. Is that your normal process? I mean, is there a, like a form you, you go off of so that somebody does circle back or I'm just wondering. Well, I would think that the people that were monitoring the event at the conclusion of it should have probably gone through the CAD call and seen that. But like I said, I don't know if that got done, so. Full disclosure, I'm suspecting that it probably never happened. Um, and that would be something that I can take a look at tomorrow. Thank you, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Okay. Um, 
You know, the other major thing that I wanted to uh, talk about just briefly was um, the police bureau is about to start our ABLE training, which is active bystander for law enforcement. Um, that begins next week and it will run until near the end of, um, of November. Um, this is a program that encourages police officers to get involved when they see inappropriate things uh, going on by other officers. And, you know, we already have that requirement by Oregon law and by our directives. This is a great program. Uh, Georgetown Law um, is where you can find more information about it. Um, it's training that will make us better, and I'm looking forward to it. I've emailed, uh, I think Mary Claire sent the email to Theo, and then I think I emailed uh, to, to Anne and to Lakiana, and then Taji, I forgot to include you, so I sent one to you. Uh, so you should, a bunch of you should have emails saying that we have six spots uh, that are available for PSEP members if they would like to um, participate in kind of a, a condensed version of the ABLE training. Um, and uh, I'll just leave it uh, to PSEP to, to figure out how that goes, but we're looking forward to people uh, taking a look at what the ABLE training is. All right. All right, there's a comment in there. Please use my titles. Okay, fine. You can call me Chief Rome, whatever you want. Um, what I would uh, also then just uh, quickly convey, I know there was questions in there about Portland Police Bureau attendance at some of the subcommittee meetings. I am not able to answer that um, right off the top of my head. And I don't know if Mary Claire is available to talk about those attendance or not. I am here, Chief. And I don't see the, I'm sorry, I been, can't see the chat. What was the question? About the attendance uh, at this? I believe is why was there no PPB folks at either the settlement agreement slash policy or the racial equity meeting? Uh, for the um, settlement policy and settlement agreement meeting, um, I was unable to attend. I usually attend all of those, as you all well know. And but uh, the Department of Justice was here for a visit to observe our um, crowd control training. And on that after, on that day, uh, the DOJ representatives attended both the morning and afternoon sessions. And that training went till um, close to seven o'clock. So by the time we got them back downtown and I was home, um, it was too late. So I apologize for missing that one, but, um, and the racial equity one, I think that, uh, that too, there was a conflict, but I thought that um, Marlon was going to attend Gloria. I'm not sure, did Marlon not attend Gloria? The Gloria black. attended those with Celeste. You're actually your black lady. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Marlon, Marlon did attend the racial equity subcommittee. Yeah. Uh, Celeste is the co-chair. Uh, Dan Handelman referenced the behavioral health subcommittee where there wasn't uh, police officer representation. I'm sorry. I okay. thought that was and I thought we had information in the chat that uh, officer Chase Bryson may have attended that meeting. It was clarified like in the chat that he yeah. was asking about the racial equity committee. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and it sounds like it just might have been an oversight. It seems like there's usually PPB folks at, at all of these meetings. Can I ask a quick question of everyone? Is it possible maybe to get an email sent out to PSEP just to let us know folks aren't going to be there? Then we won't have to go through asking where were they? Do you think maybe, Mary Claire, we could do that? Like just get notification? Sure, and I'll do my best to get you that for each one. Okay. Great, let's turn it over to, uh, anything else from the Assistant Chief from? Nope, thank you. Thank you.
let's turn it over now to, uh, I believe it's Sam with the mayor's office. Good evening. And I am joined by Stephanie Lorenko, the mayor's public safety advisor. Uh, great to see you all. Um, and for the new members, uh, welcome. Um, so I'm just going to give a bit of a high level recap of some of the activities and kind of what's currently on the desk, so to speak, in the mayor's office. Um, and Stephanie and I can try to, um, if you have any specific questions, we'll do our best to field them. Um, I do want to start out with a September 17th um, uh, uh, community safety press conference, and I'm going to drop the link into the chat. Um, for those who weren't able to join live, there's a YouTube uh, feature, and then there's also a transcript. Uh, so whatever uh, works best for you. The reason why I share that is because the mayor covered uh, quite a bit of policy and budget implementation updates that I think are really relevant uh, to the hard work that PSEP has done, particularly um, core patrol services that I've have the, had the privilege to work with all of you on. Um, so then there's a lot of um, update status updates about the doubling of public safety specialists um, uh, in the police bureau and being able to work with Deputy Chief Frum and, and Chief Lavelle on that, um, doubling the behavioral health unit. And so really the, it was an opportunity for the mayor to, to provide that update to the public. Um, You'll also uh, start to see some of the initial briefings and the, and the thinking um, uh, that the mayor has in meeting with the police bureau in meeting with many of the public safety advisory bodies, uh, reading the reports that you all are creating and, and uh, uh, hearing a potential forecast from our city budget office on the fall bump. And for those who may not be familiar, there are two parts of the city's budget cycle where bureaus um, assess that what, what's currently in their bank account, so to speak, and what they're going to spend for the rest of the year. And maybe they get to a point where, oh, they the city council allocated something that the bureau isn't going to spend on. That money needs to go back into the pot. And then the city budget office gives city council the updated uh, balance. And so city council is able two times a year to allocate that. So we are coming up, we're in fall bump season. Um, and so I wanted to share some of um, the initial uh, uh, thinking uh, by the mayor um, and we can get into that more. Um, the mayor did meet with Elliot Young, thanked him for his service and uh, uh, they were able to have an hour long conversation about thoughts on serving on PSEP. Um, and the mayor is just really grateful um, uh, to be able to have learned from Chair Young. Um, and I was personally uh, uh, able to staff that one and just, um, yeah, I think just really acknowledge the hard work that you all, that you all do. Um, I think with that, um, Stephanie, did I miss anything? Did I miss any meetings of note that we should let PSEP know about? And no, if not, I, I will open I, up I for did, questions. I did add a link on a press conference you did this afternoon. Uh, about the street racing. Great, thanks so much. And for those who, who um, again, there's a lot to track these days. Um, City Council did adopt a, a street uh, closure ordinance uh, with an emergency attached to it. So you're starting to see the police bureau um, take that uh, additional enforcement level that was in the ordinance and do enforcement operations. But I think an important note I hope it's okay to share, Stephanie, is the, um, uh, the personnel and the budget that's associated with it. So in order for that to be successful, it was, correct me if I'm wrong, it was about $16,000, $17,000. Um, and officers who, um, uh, in addition to their work week, uh, uh, signed up for that, for that um, assignment. So. And all that she... Chief from uh, address that since he's here, but that was the estimate that I got. Amy, we don't have the, the final update uh, from the city budget office, um, at least I do not, but as soon as I do have that publicly available, I will get that to you all. Um, I think we're just trying to figure out, uh, or the city budget office rather is figuring out uh, really from all the bureaus, they need to get the final uh, numbers in. 
um, and make sure that we have that accurate before we start um, briefing city council in the formal budget process. And Theo, I will route that uh, forecast to you. And if you can send it to all the PSET members, that would be great. Hey, Sam, I'm wondering, um, there, I think I believe there was about 16 arrests at the sh show. What was the racial background of the arrestees or people who arrested? That is a good question. I do not have the, the racial demographics up off the top of my head. Stephanie, do you happen to have that after action? No, we don't have that yet. Or Chief I also Brown. really like to know the, the age of the people arrested because I really am also skeptical of what's happening with this. I know it's managing a one issue, but at the same time is creating another issue. Uh, I believe the majority of people who engage in these activities are of color and are of younger populations. And I don't know what arresting them is doing in order to abate the issue or is solving in general. So I'm very interested in that, those numbers, if I could get some updates on that later. Thank you. Sure, I'll, um, uh, Chief Rahm may be able to fill in, but before that, I do wanna say that city council did hear exactly um, right, the lived experience that you're lifting up and the potential, the, the um, racial impact, potential racial impact analysis that would be part of any policy really that goes before city council. So one of the changes in the ordinance as it was coming to council was the creation of a diversion program. Um, so where you do have first time offenders um, of this ordinance, they're given this option, um, you know, to, to, I guess, you know, not, not uh, go into jail, right? Not, not have anything on their criminal record, go through this diversion program and uh, see, witness, uh, personally feel, right? The impacts and the, the health and safety dangers that are posed by this activity. And really hoping that that type of approach, that that type of, um, I think, educational model, right? Feeling it, seeing it, uh, hearing the effects, um, uh, will help deter uh, people from repeating that that activity, right? Because this is a health. The reason why the city can do this is because of the health and safety concern um, that that the activity poses. Um, Chief Rum, if you'd like to add anything, you're far more the subject matter expert here than than me. Yeah, just I do not have the breakdowns on gender, race, or age of the people that were arrested or cited. I only have the, just the high level numbers of how many people were arrested or cited or how many cars were towed. I will add it to my homework to report back. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions on all of the updates we had, we realize that there's a lot of them. Any other questions uh, from mayor staff, PPB, PSIP staff, or the PSIP subcommittees before we move on to our next agenda item? I see a question in the chat from Rochelle Silver. Um, can you please clarify which oversight committee? Are you referring to focused intervention team? Community uh, oversight. The one group? to uh, the one to replace uh, the IPR and the citizen review committee. Oh, gotcha. Um, I actually do not have the latest, um, so I do not want to give an inaccurate report out on that. Um, Stephanie, there's, there's, I there's, there's some DOJ mediation going on with that, so we don't really have much we can talk about until that's completed. Yeah, I do. I do know. I, and you know, one of the agenda items tonight is uh, by the current oversight uh, committee, so the citizen review committee. Um, so I know that the chairs are still. Um, uh, they have quite a, a heavy lift and a and a very full docket, and they actually just briefed council um, on their uh, on the report that you all will be hearing and discussing tonight. Um, so. I think they're very hard at work um, and, and before council and, and educating all of us on 
um, crowd control and use of force. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll try to get the latest and Stephanie and I will make sure that we, uh, when, whenever we can, we give that update here uh, to PSAP um, and make sure that you are able to track it. And then the mayor um, did receive a lot of feedback um, to be to give the community safety updates more. Um, so you will you will see more of those press conferences, more of those um, I think uh, primers um, that were provided, like the transcript that's linked. Um, and so uh, we definitely hear the interest. And so we want to respond to that by being just more proactive about these updates. Appreciate it. Um, we are going to move on to the next uh, agenda item. I do want to acknowledge that Commissioner Hardesty has joined us. Uh, so appreciate having her presence here. She's been at uh, many other of our meetings before and um, so has her staff. I don't know if she has any comments. Um, I see her video is off, so she might be multitasking here. But Commissioner, if you're there and you do want to say something, I'll give you that space. Lakian, I think you're frozen. And you're back. I think Lakiana's e email or internet might have just gone out. Um, yes, so we can we can move on to the the next agenda item, the strategic plan. Okay, let's start. Yeah, Lakiana is not getting connected, so I'll just keep going from here. So, off the strategic plan, um, this is the agenda item that I believe was introduced last. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was. So um, as I think I've discussed it though, at least, uh, the idea of um, hiring uh, a per contractor or contractors to uh, have a strategic plan undergo for PSEP. Um, there's a variety of reasons that it would benefit PSEP, some that we've already discussed, including the utilization of, um, or sorry, not utilization, sorry, the overhaul of the um, subcommittees so that they can be more, uh, aligned and harmonious with each other because there's a lot of disparate um, different ideas happening and we're also running into conflicts with for example the youth subcommittee the lack of youth and the benefits of having the specific topics we have as opposed to um, a policy subcommittee which may be doing recommendation leading or another one that focuses on communicate com uh, not communication but community relations with with the police like those there could be a, a different way we could imagine the subcommittees um, that would alleviate some of the existing issues. And then we also could bring in at the same time the new model of the subcommittee chairs being the steering committee, which I also am a proponent of. Um, so there's a lot of, oh, and then the other benefit to the having a strategic plan is that long-term PSEP really needs to have the foundation and strong uh, basis of community support in order to thrive in the future. And so it's important that we know what we are, know what we're good at, and know how we can move forward with those goals. And I think that having an external point of view to that would really benefit us. Um, and so it sort of opened up for larger discussion on the strategic plan, on the idea of having it, um, but also, you know, what, what, what could be uh, looked at in the strategic plan, you know, beyond the, the general body, you know, for example, the, the subcommittees um, and the steering committee switch, like those sorts of things would be a part of it. Uh, and it could have uh, dot timelines as well to it, like a five-year plan stretch and that has a check-in point 
for us so we can keep accountability. And then the last thing I just remember off the top of my head is metrics. Uh, PCEP has had um, the Amici, the Friends of the Court, uh, which includes the Mental Health Alliance and the Albino Ministerial uh, Coalition, I believe. Uh -huh. They have presented us with metrics that we then had the opportunity to talk about, I believe a year or so ago. Those metrics we didn't adopt, but we did this, we need to have metrics nonetheless. And it's important for our bylaws and it's important uh, to hold ourselves accountable. So we need to add new bylaws and that would be something that could fit under the auspice of the strategic plan process um, if, if that moves forward after our, uh, I believe we're gonna do a consensus vote. So as long as there's no opposing folks, then we'll just go ahead with that and then get moving on it with the timeline. I don't know if Theo wants to share what that might look like, but um, yeah, is there any questions or direct uh, ideas or thoughts on the strategic plan? I wanna share uh, PSEP members and then we'll do community members. I can share in the comments as well. Amy? Yeah, Taji, um, I love the idea of doing a strategic plan. What I really think is important is that as we're developing it, I would prefer that we not bring in um, an outside entity to, to do this just yet. Give us uh, PSEP members a chance to really hunker down together and see what we can come up with together as we become one voice stronger, you know, going forward. But the strategic plan, I have a hesitation because I've read a lot of five year strategic plans in my 30 years of volunteering. And everyone has really high ideals and aspirations. But when it comes to policies and procedures, it gets a little tricky and sticky. So then it kind of deflates people's hopes of what to look forward to. So I just ask that we look at this realistically as to uh, rules, regulations, boundaries of what's possible. So we can, you know, move our momentum around what we can make happen and not what we're gonna spend the next 10 years fighting because we can't make it happen, even if we wanted to. So do you think maybe we can have a deeper discussion about it amongst ourselves first? Since this is the first I'm hearing this. Ah, she's frozen. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh yeah, we're, we're all struggling with some issues right now. I can hop in on that question, though. I think we we definitely need an outside facilitator for the process. And I think, Amy, what you're talking about would be part of that process. I think a great strategic uh, uh, planning facilitator would have us do some parts of it where it's like, hey, you guys got to go get together and like talk to, through some things um, as part of that. So I think that would answer that concern. I think it's a definitely an important part for us to have that space. And um, yeah, by the way, Taji's computer went down, so he's going to be booted. So I'm taking back over after mine went down. Um, yeah, I want Theo. Amy, does that answer your question? Totally. You're talking about just um, getting a facilitator to facilitate the dialogue. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't create it without us they would create it with us right but you you want yeah. all to participate right so if we right. facilitate ourselves then some of us would not be participating because we would be facilitating it and also we're just not equipped for that right like we, you know we could put something together but you want someone who knows what they're doing who helps create strategic plans and i think it's just so essential to our work right now because right now we don't really have a guiding north star if you will for pcips work it's just kind of like whatever comes up whatever the members are interested in but that doesn't really lead to outcomes it doesn't really guide us and i think pcip more than ever right now needs a plan right so when you have new members come in like we are focused when we're all working on our different subcommittees we're all focused towards the same goal i think changing that structure too that uh, theo alluded to i think would help in that um capacity um, as far as the metrics which have been attached to this agenda for today, 
I think it's really hard for us to just vote on those because they're just kind of put together, but they're not part of anything larger, any bigger plan. So it's kind of just arbitrary. PCEF could certainly vote and pass them, but I don't think it would mean much until we have a, a plan that kind of goes with it. And we decide, as Amy had kind of mentioned, we, um, we, we do some internal work together, which I know has been often talked about. Um, Theo, I don't think you've mentioned yet just where the update is on the um, uh, consultants that we've been looking at. Um, and I know you have some updates on that, so I'll pass it over to you. And I see your hand as well, so we'll get to that in a second. Sure. Well, uh, we as PCEF staff members are obviously in complete support of having a strategic plan. Um, we uh, think that it's a necessary thing. It's also a good place to develop PCEF specific metrics that are designed by you all uh, with integrated Amici uh, input, obviously. Um, but we've been looking at a, a few different options for a strategic planner. And one of the important things uh, about that is to hasten the process a little bit. They would all be uh, already registered with the city of Portland so we, we could get it uh, uh, done quicker. And, and Judith has, the, has more wording about that. I don't know what that's called. Um, but we don't, we don't have to do an RFP. All we have to do is, is a scope of work and we already have a loosely structured framework for a scope of work. Uh, and then they would just come in. We could do a three-year strategic plan, a two-year strategic plan. It'd really be responsive to what PSEP members needed and wanted and felt like you uh, needed to have from a strategic planning session or a few sessions and uh, a lot of different COVID registers. That, that's right. Um, a lot of different uh, strategic plans have a variety of different phases like this, the phase one or this, the first stage is like a research stage where the strategic planner will get familiar with the settlement agreement uh, with the PSEP plan with the bylaws and then they'll come in and do a facilitation they'll do like the strategic planning with the members and with PSEP staff involved also um, and with Amici if Amici want to be involved certainly the, the PSEP would probably want the Amici to be involved and then after where they do uh, some some aftercare right so and research terms, we, we do program evaluations all the time, and then we have to do follow up. Uh, so this would be similar. There'd be follow up. You'd have to uh, identify measures and see where they're at in six months, and in, in eight months, and ten months, and a year, and two years. And then if another strategic plan needed to happen, then then that would that would take place as well. Great, thank you for that. Um, got some comments or some questions or some hands. So we're going to go with Ann, and then we're going to go with Byron. Um, thank you. I just wanted to point out that the metrics that are attached to the um, um, our agenda tonight were the ones that Amy actually put together, um, and then we added some additional ones. But I like the idea of um, working with someone to kind of help um, come up with a strategic plan. Yeah, um, I'm kind of flipping through them right now. This is this eight page, yeah, document. So yeah, that's kind of where we're gonna, you know, bring it together so we do it right. There's no point in, in voting on things then having to go back and people really not understanding it. So um, we wanna make sure that there's that, that time and that would be part of that strategic planning process where PSIP would sit down, people would be together, be able to really understand what it is we're looking at and go from there. Um, turning it over to Byron for his question. No, I was a comment on the strategic plan. Um, I would think that would help if we have some live um, role playing in a sense, uh, some on hands uh, going through a demonstration because I think a lot of times when we come to these meetings, we're venting yet we're not coming up with solutions. So I think a one way of uh, writing a strategic plan would go through a role play of a situation. Everybody is involved um, asking questions at certain points in um, whatever it is that we're talking about for us, as far as the strategic plan, okay? What happens at a point A? What happens at point B, C, D, and F? And then we come up with an answer. Um, so strategic plan, I don't know how you guys are, Taji or Theo or like Lakiana, but I think that has to be implemented in some way. We can have some type of um, a role playing, uh, something played out in a sense to get a true understanding. Maybe we have to go out on the streets and spend a day out on the streets figuring out all these strategic plans, but 
just sitting here talking about it, thinking of it is not, is not going to help. I like that idea. I think it's going to rely on all of us to kind of bring those ideas to the table. So, um, Theo, did you already give the update on you? We did on where we're at with the, um, just the, uh, the folks that we're thinking of consulting with. Yeah, we're uh, working on identifying um, availability, but we'd like to ideally do it uh, not after November. I know that we have some folks who are probably going to leave, be leaving the piece up in November, and we don't want to, we don't want this to happen without those folks who have all the, the institutional knowledge of piece up. So we need to get it done in October, and November, and and we can, uh, but uh, as long as there's consensus with you all, obviously. Uh, we can. That's a timeline that we can accommodate. But we've reached out, uh, so we're we're trying to just gauge availability of the of the individuals. Awesome. Well, time is of the essence, and so we will make that happen. I'm going to open it up to public comment. Um, we're not voting on anything tonight. I know it's on the agenda to vote for metrics, but we're not going to vote on them. So, uh, public comment on the strategic plan, thoughts, ideas, questions. We'll take those now. Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Ann for the next section. She's going to talk about the CRC report. Um, Taji's computer's down, so he's not going to be with us for the rest of the evening. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of an audible here. Go ahead, Ann. Uh, thank you, Lakiana. Um, what we attached on the agenda was actually, um, I believe, our PCEP statement. And we had written that, um, I had written that last, uh, actually in August, and it was prior to the CRC report, which um, being uh, uh, presented to the Portland City Council. And I know that happened recently. Um, as I think we mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, we didn't have quorum last month. But uh, so we weren't able to vote on this, but the statement um, is just of support for um, the CRC report. I, I know that um, Claudia, we can put that up on the screen. The entire report is quite lengthy, but if people did want to um, at least look through, maybe we could go down to the executive summary. We can also um, put it in the chat, but uh, the statement is that we support this report and its findings. It, it aligns with what we've, uh, what we've heard here in Peace Up at our meetings from the community. Um, and that's all I have on that. Um, do we have the, the, piece, the uh, Peace Up statement also that we can put up? Um, Claudia? Um, we wanted to vote tonight. Claudia, do you have that statement or should I send that? Um, we wanted to vote tonight on that um, and send that to the mayor's office and city council members if we can. Thank you. And this is an agenda too. So if people want to pull this up, they can. Right. And also, as you will note, um, we do have a link to the full report in this statement. Can are you read? Are there any questions? Could you read us just that first paragraph for everybody who's here and might be on the phone? Yeah. OK. PSEP supports and wants to amplify the Citizen Review Committee Portland protests. I don't know if I'm seeing the entire piece. I'm sorry. Okay, and then also I'm going to give. That's that's it. Just that okay. Question. Okay. Protests, Citizen Review Committee summary and recommendations. We believe the work of the CRC closely aligns with the work of PSEP, as noted in the CRC report. The purpose of the Citizens Review Committee's Crowd Control and Use of Force Work Group is to critically examine the Portland Police Bureau's use of force pol policies, training, and tactics in order to make recommendations based on 
best practices and legal standards. In response to the murder of George Floyd by police in May 2020, thousands of Portlanders took to the streets daily for months in protest of police brutality and the disproportionate impact on communities of color. During these protests, many concerning confrontations between Portland police and the community occurred. In response, this work group set out to gather community input about what was happening on the ground at protests through public forum and online surveys. PSEP supports these recommendations for improved policing practices to facilitate the First Amendment right of all Portlanders. The recommendations summarized below are explained and elabor elaborated upon in section four of this report. And then I go, it goes on to kind of further detail. Um, and for context, for people who are unfamiliar with the Citizen Review Committee, it's uh, similar to the work that uh, PCEP does. And we collaborate a lot with the members. I believe Vadim is on the CRC. Um, so he's on both committees. So this is you know, not a new group to us. So just to give you context on what you're going to be voting on, um, this is a group that we, we've done a lot of work with. And so we, we definitely want to uplift it. They've uplifted our work in the past. Um, and this report that they put together is, is really good work. Uh, we do have a quorum. No, we don't anymore because Taji just, uh, I think we can take Taji's vote because Taji was in favor of it. I want to just check with Theo though or any other um, gurus in the space of uh, rules and order, just to make sure that that's correct. You can't vote by, by proxy, um, but he messaged me earlier in the chat uh, that, that yes, because I, I, I saw that he might have to leave early uh, and he said yes, but I'm, I'm texting him right now. He doesn't have a phone right now? He does. So why don't you text him and grab Thanks. that? So before we vote, we'll take any public comment questions, and we'll also take PSIP comments, and we'll just do both since I don't think there will be a ton, but uh, I do encourage um, you. Can I, I'm yeah, sorry, I mean to interrupt. Uh, Taji did text me that he's in support of it. Awesome. Uh, Amy, go ahead. Yeah, I have one question. Is there any... Um, explanation or layout of timelines in regards to the recommendations that were put inside that document like this year next year year after like do we have any idea of implementation availability i do not have that answer does anyone and, and would you know that i'm going to pull it i'm going to pull the report up and see if it's if it's mentioned in there I do know that it was presented to city council recently and now it's in their hands to implement is my understanding. Um, if Commissioner Hardesty is here, she might have some information on that. Okay, we received the report. The mic, so. Yeah, I just need an estimate. Like we, we produce a lot of recommendations and it'd be good to know which ones, if any of them are able to implement fairly quickly or if we have to keep coming back asking the same questions. Um, this in particular is a statement of support on their report and its recommendations. It's not actually a PSEP recommendation. And I do see in the chat that Commissioner Hardesty said that they accepted the report. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, and to your point, there's, there's not, it doesn't say like, from what I just browsed really quickly through it, there's not like, um, like we want this thing enacted by this time. Um, we'll turn it over to Dan for the next question. Hi, can you hear me? I can't see if I'm muted or not. Nope, you're, you're unmuted. Go ahead. Great. Um, this is Dan Handelman with Portland Cop Watch. Um, and we made some extensive comments on the CRC's report. I don't think I CC'd that to, to your committee, which was a mistake on my part. I'll send them on to you um, when I'm done making this comment. But uh, one of the things that I find interesting is that the city is required to respond to your 
um, your recommendations within 60 days, but they're not required to respond to the CRC's recommendations. So I really encourage you to pass this because then um, they have to respond. Of course, they can say we accepted the report, which doesn't mean they're going to do any work on it. Uh, one of the things about the CRC uh, crowd control and crowd control writ large is that they made another report like this in 2014, so seven years ago. And in that report, they talked about officer identification being a problem that was mentioned in this report. Is for some reason it didn't come up in the council report, um, but uh, that, as you know, last year the police were given free reign to walk around with numbers that weren't their badge numbers and without their name tags on. Uh, while they committed a lot of acts of misconduct and made it almost impossible to file complaints against them. So that's one thing I hope that uh, PCCP is highlighting. I hadn't gone through your whole statement to see if that's in there. Um, and another thing is that uh, kettling was not included in the 2014 report because the police came to the subcommittee and the CRC subcommittee meetings and cop watch members went to all those meetings. And when we said we had people in our group that were surrounded on all sides by police, that's called kettling. They said, oh, no, we don't use kettling as a technique. And the CRC didn't make a recommendation about that back then, but they brought it up in the new report, which is important because I find that a, a really problematic tactic that the police keep using over and over again. And of course, you know, the, the whole question about who got targeted, who got arrested, including people of color and journalists. Um, uh, and of course, then the people that CRC mentions in the report, the houseless people who were downtown and other people who were not even participating in protests um, got caught up in the uh, indiscriminate use of uh, weaponry. So it's a very important report. I'm glad that you're weighing in on it. And it's too bad that you didn't have time to do it last week. I misread my calendar last month. You used to have your meetings on the third Tuesday of the month. Uh, so I forgot that your meeting was uh, six days after the CRC went to council instead of the day before. So, uh, but I think it's still important for you to weigh in and thank you. Appreciate that additional context. Really helpful to know. <clears throat> Any other questions before we head to a vote? Okay, so we're gonna go into a vote. I'll go down the list, call your name, and you just vote yes, or just say yes or no. Um, you can also choose to abstain. Um, per, you know, we've had a lot of votes and a lot of conversations around this before, so uh, or not around this, but using the abstain. And what we would suggest is not to use abstain unless you're very unclear about the information or there's a conflict of interest. And if there is a question that you might have, if we're able to clear that up so that we don't have abstentions is our preference. Um, so I'm just gonna go down the list, uh, starting with Taji. Um, Theo, can you give us Taji's uh, vote? Okay, awesome. Ann? Yes. Uh, myself, yes. Amy? Most deaf, yes. Okay, Byron? Yes. Gloria? Yes. Tia? Yes. Anyone else that I'm missing? Okay, so the vote passes uh, seven to zero. Thank you all for that. Congrats to some of our members who this was their first vote. Um, we are going to move on to the next item on the agenda, which we actually skipped over. It was the piece of codification. Um, we brought this up last month and then tabled it in order to give members a chance to review it. Um, it's been up for a while, but we've been discussing this uh, feels like for a very long time. Um, the, the idea behind this, for those who, who need a little bit more context with it, is that um, this would write PSEP into city code. We used the framework of the um, PSEP, oh gosh, I'm forgetting, PSEP plan, and then made amendments to it based off of member feedback and just things that we had seen from our three years of work. That's covered in the first few pages of this. So if you're looking at the document, which is attached to the agenda, it's page one and two kind of tracks the changes, if you will, that have gone on um, and lays out the vision, scope, goals of PSEP. Um, I don't know if anyone has uh, any additional context to add. 
but what I would like to do is just open it up uh, for questions or comments before we go into uh, vote. And we'll start with PSEP comments and then we'll go to uh, uh, public comment. Are there any PSEP questions on this codification document or suggested edits? Um, noting that we have edited this many times, but are still open to it if there's if there's something that we feel needs to be changed. Um, we have, let's go with Amy and then Tia. Sorry, I didn't see who put their hand up first. You can go ahead and let Tia speak first. I can go second, that's fine. Okay, on, on the second page, I was just wondering when it says we listen to the diverse groups of people, it says at round tables and town halls. Is that happening in person or are those, um, um, I mean, are those still happening? Are we still doing round tables and town halls? What, uh, where, what number is that that you're seeing that on? One, two, it's the fourth dot down under what we're authorized to do under the scope of work. Okay, let me get to that. So, okay, so that's page um, three for people who are following along on this. Yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Um, Say the question one more time. Are we doing round tables in town halls still? So by town video, by Zoom. Yeah. Okay. All it's that by Zoom. Okay. If we ever go back to meeting in person, we will continue the way we did before COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still. It's still definitely part of our scope, just kind of adapting to our current conditions, if you will. Um, Amy, go ahead with your question. Yeah, my question was, um, there's a lot in here and I was just kind of wondering when we get together with someone to help us create a strategic plan, would that then be added to this piece that we're uh, wanting to implement and talk about now? Or should we wait and craft this almost simultaneously when we do the strategic plan? Nope, this is, to think about this, this is kind of like the, the rules of PCEP, right? And like what PCEP will do and what won't do, but it doesn't really guide our work. So they're two separate things. So passing this would not, it, this is basically like the, yeah, just like the rules of how PCEP works. And, and even honestly, I'm not even sure if all of this would go into the final codification. If you look at actual bodies that are codified in yeah. the city code, you know, it's not gonna be all of this stuff. It'll be very simple things you know, such as the number of members, such as how they're elected and things of that. So the, the, the strategic plan uh, is, is different outside of that. Got it. Thanks, Lakiana. So this is the framework of PSEP in code. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. Um, so we got Amy's question. If you guys can just make sure to put your hands down after you're done so we don't get confused. Um, any other PCEP comments or questions or clarifications uh, on this document? Okay, we are going to open it up to community comment. Dan, I'm not sure if this hand is new or was from last time. Uh, it's actually both. Um, this is Dan Handelman again with Portland Cop Watch. Um, yeah, I. I don't understand what happens with the phone. You press star nine to raise your hand. I press it a second time. It says the host will be informed you want to speak. So I don't know if there's a put the hand down command that's different. But uh, anyway, so uh, I uh, think uh, thinking around this, I mean, the whole idea of the codification is that it's going to be written at some point into city code that your uh, body exists. And so some of these things are far too detailed for what needs to be in city code. Uh, it's just revisions to your plan. And then somebody presumably in the city now is going to have to take piece chunks of this and put it into the code for the future. Um, the one thing I'd agree um, with Ms. Anderson about is that 
uh, it's it mentions, and I can only find one place by doing a word search, but it mentions the co-chairs. Um, and if you're going to try to redo your structure, uh, I don't know if you need to rewrite that part. Uh, that said, I really feel that there are um, overarching issues for the whole organization, the whole committee that need to be dealt with, like setting your agenda and make, making sure uh, staff is following through on things and that uh, community concerns are attended to and that the subcommittees are doing the work they're supposed to be doing. So I'm not sure I agree that the subcommittee chair should be the only people on the steering committee. I kind of feel like there should still be other people helping with the overall guidance of it. Uh, so, uh, you know, on the one hand, I'm saying be aware that it mentions the co-chairs. On the other hand, I'm also saying I don't think our organization objects to their continuing to be co-chairs. Uh, we're not big on hierarchies, uh, but it, it also just seems that people should have specific tasks to take care of uh, some kind of business that's not related to a subcommittees or else you're going to end up with a situation where when everybody's in charge, nobody's in charge. And I've seen that happen to several organizations. Um, uh, I guess that's my comments. Thank you. Uh, appreciate them. So yeah, agreeing with not all of this will end up in city code. And I think that's where we can um, follow up with the mayor's staff, which has been really helpful and kind of helping us understand what does go into city code and what doesn't. They're going to take this document. They've already kind of put some of the pieces in place. And so the co-chair piece I'm imagining might not go in there, but we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there to see what is that even necessary? I don't know if the mayor staff has thoughts on it right now. They probably need to look at it, but that's my initial thought. Um, and I would say at least half of this probably won't make it into city code. This is kind of the vision of what PCEP wants. And some of it might go into, for example, our bylaws or things of that nature. Um, I'm just going to ask if the mayor's office has any comment on this at this point. No, not for me. Okay. Awesome. Um, other questions that we have, um, it's open floor for both the um, um, either uh, committee members or um, the public right now. And by the way, I'm on my phone, so if there's comments. It's a little bit hard for me to read them. So if someone wants to just bring those up, if they're there. Um, and again, just to kind of circle back to this, what we are voting on is this document being used as the basis for codification, which will then involve the mayor's office kind of helping us whittle down, hey, this is what's from your document, what's actually going to be in the final codification process. And here's some stuff that you guys should save for your bylaws, or maybe even some of it might eventually end up in a strategic plan. Um, so Theo, I need you to, if you can ask um, Taji what his vote is on this and I'll just go down the list of other, all the other members and we will go from there. Does that make sense? Yep. Awesome. So uh, Ann? Yes. Amy? Yes. Byron? Yes. Gloria? Yes. Tia? Yes. Uh, myself, I'm a yes. And then um, do we have Aji's answer yet? Not yet. OK, so we will circle back I to really the- We have it. It's yes. It's a yes? Yes. OK, awesome. So that passes 7 to 0 vote. Um, Thank you all for that. It's, this has been a this has been on the table for a long time, so we really appreciate us being able to move through this. I know for a lot of you, it still might be a little unclear of exactly all the components of it, but there will definitely be further conversations and a circle back once this eventually comes to city council, which will then vote on it and putting us in the city code. What, what current piece that currently exists within the settlement agreement? So this is a, a big step forward into making PCEP a a permanent piece of the landscape of police accountability here in Portland. Um, PCEP quarterly report, that's 
we have up next. I'm going to pull that up on my screen. And do you have any comments on it before I go through it? I have not drafted. No, I don't. We did bring this up. Um, this is another uh, report that we brought up last month, and we didn't have a quorum to vote on it. It does follow the same format that we've had before. The only thing that is missing, and, and I appreciate um, Theo for putting that together. The only thing that's missing is in the past, we did have the numbers of people that were at those meetings. Um, and we could add that pretty easily, couldn't we, uh, Theo? That would be the only thing we might want to do. Yep, I'm sorry about that. That was just an oversight. No worries. Um, so uh, the report, as Ann said, it's drafted August 31st. Um, lists are the agendas for all the different committees, the committee members that are on it. Um, recommendations that PSET passed in this update. Uh, the, so the quarterly report happens every three-ish months. So the recommendations in this past time period included the core patrol services recommendation that was championed by Taji and Elliot. Um, it gives a list of our public meetings that were held. Um, so this goes back from April through, uh, through August. Um, trainings that we did, um, so retreats that we held, vacancies that were filled and people that um, cycled off of PSEP, uh, challenges that included PSEP website, the workload, our, our applicants, COVID-19 restrictions, input from PPV officers, uh, timely responses, and then it also includes any special meetings, which were our Truth and Reconciliation webinar series, which is still um, ongoing, and then our reports that we conducted. So I think this is a really good document. I, I think it'll be especially helpful as we long-term see the effectiveness of PSEP and helping um, members stay abreast on what we've done. So for those of you who just joined on for the la in the last month or two, I think this would be great for you to take a look at and just kind of take a peek at what PSEP has been working on, um, voting on. And I think that's particularly the, the challenges section is really good too, because it kind of shows us um, the areas that we, we continue to struggle in. Um, I see, um, do you want me to help you, assist you with the people that have hands raised? Yeah, actually I can see them, but I'll, I'll oh, okay. get some more involvement. So I'd love for you to take that on and have a little stab at running some of this. <laughs> Okay, um, I saw that Sam Diaz had his hand up. Uh, thanks, Ann. Um, and thanks for producing the document. I just wanted to add, um, and Theo and Claudia, I emailed it to you. Um, one of the comments uh, that PSET made when you all voted um, uh, unanimously on the Corps Patrol Services was, how does this translate into a city hall conversation? And so on July 27th, City Council did have a two hour work session. We were able to go through the um, uh, analysts' findings about the community engagement um, that was that PSEP led, and then um, ultimately the recommendations. And then, as once City Council has that work session, right now, as staff and as City Bureau employees, we're able to then take the directives from my boss, you know, other other council offices, and then turn that into proposals like the fall bump. So I just really want to appreciate that and make sure that that kind of the assembly line of work, so to speak, is 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 running. Um, thanks to you all. Can you um, give us any updates on where any of that work is right now? As you mentioned, the fall bump, and I know you're making those decisions now. So is is any of that work that was really championed as you, as it's been said by Elliot and Taji, is there any update on any of anything on that? So we're still uh, getting the final numbers on what funding is available and any strings to it. And then uh, we're still uh, uh, putting together draft decision packages. Um, and so once we're able to share that out, I will share that with you, but I can tell you at this point, um, you'll see emphasis on Portland street response on, um, and, and, you know, I think PSEP's recommendation to expand it, um, and then, uh, public safety specialist, 
um, enhanced uh, crisis uh, uh, community training uh, unit within PPB um, and then the behavioral health unit. Um, you'll also see support for Beacon. Um, uh, and so one of the PSEPs recommendations was uh, finding a way for Sobering Center, which has now been um, uh, named uh, the Beacon effort. Um, and so you'll see, I would say those are, again, draft decision packages, depending on the availability of funding. But I just, again, want to be transparent about how your research, the community outreach is, is helping to shape these um, internal uh, conversations that then I'm you know, really excited and eager to get back to you with more written language that then uh, council will ultimately hear um, for consideration on their vote. Thank you so much. So there is hope that some of those proposals could be part of the fall bump then. That's what I'm hearing, is that correct? Wonderful, to be continued. Um, Dan, do you have your hand up? Well, seriously, I don't remember doing that again, but I do have a comment, so if that's okay. Um, once more, this is Dan Handelman, the Portland Cop Watch. Uh, I just wanna make sure that PCCP members know, and I don't think there's anywhere else on the agenda for this, that the recommendation that you made about condolence letters that was accepted by the mayor in the first quarter of the year um, was not actually put into effect until after your meeting when um, the sister of uh, um, one of the shooting victims came and spoke at your meeting. And then the mayor sent out letters to the, uh, the first two people who got killed by the Portland police this year. Um, basically on the same day that came out in Portland Mercury's reporting. Um, I know Alex Zelinsky is on the phone, so just want to give her a shout out for doing that research. I, I raised this question in court in front of Judge Simon, you know, if the if the recommendation was accepted in March, were the people who were shot in um, April and June, were their families notified? The answer is not until early September. Um, I also want to make sure that as you are talking about this package, this fall bump package, that the mayor is talking about uh, finding ways to hire more police. After we spent this whole long last year in a racial justice uprising, and you all did a lot of input about reallocating police funds, you were very careful not to use the word defunding, um, that now they're th talking about finding ways to put more cops back on the streets um, by perhaps rehiring officers who already are tired. Um, two problems with this, number one, it means those officers are going to be getting both their retirement fee and uh, their retirement money and their new salary. So they get to double dip into our city's money. Um, and uh, the second thing is that either two or three people who were disciplined since this, uh, since this program went into effect are officers who were uh, fired and then, or, or who retired, I'm sorry, and who were rehired, including the uh, sergeant who made those uh, really terrible remarks after Qantas Hayes was killed and they tried to, fire him and they couldn't, so they had him uh, get rehired, take a big settlement and then leave again. So uh, I'm not sure that the retire rehire program is a good plan for Portland. And if you're gonna weigh in on the fall bump, I hope that you'll have something to say about that. And I know that's not directly related to your report, but it's all related to the issues that you're talking about. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, Sam, do you wanna comment on that? Um, I think so. The mayor, uh, you know, look to PSEP on uh, the, you know, ultimately what your letter and what the testimony will be on the fall bump. Um, I would just note that uh, again, refer you to the transcript and the press conference of the mayor. And I would say it is not, uh, you know, the approach here is really reform um, and restaff, um, noting the immediate. Uh, emergencies, the immediate, right, the 911 calls, um, the increased shootings, uh, homicides, um, that, uh, that we do have uh, police officers responding to, um, the structures that you, many of you are part of in terms of reforming, right, including the focused intervention team, community oversight group. Um, there is a new appointed uh, um, leadership team within the police bureau, the focused intervention team, we have Commander Nakamura, Sergeant Julio, and Captain Crooker um, only focused right on 
on um, gun violence um, in our city. And so when we, when I think um, when Dan says rehire, I, I absolutely, right, that's, that's absolutely true, but I don't want us to lose the nuance about one, what the need is in our community um, and what calls are coming in to our 911 center and to the reform efforts that because of the calls for racial justice and the calls for accountability, um, we have been we have been putting into place. So and please, you know, lean into that. It's an opportunity. We view that as an opportunity and a privilege in the mayor's office to to champion that accountability with you all. And we understand it's our role. Like we play roles here um, to to make sure that those changes are durable. So I'll, I'll just note that. And I'm happy to for follow up questions and as decision packages um, become written and public and formal. Um, absolutely would love the opportunity to to more fully brief PSAP and the public in this type of meeting. Thank you, Sam. Hey, Sam, can I can I add to that? Go ahead. Go ahead, Stephanie. No, I'm sorry. Just trying to get my hand thing raised up. I couldn't find that. Uh, I just want to just uh, a note of just how the the language uh, that we're using and that is we're, there's no ask for more. It is is restaffing which it's, it's not more than what's already um, the vacancies that are there. They're just trying to use this methodology to fill existing vacancies, which essentially is the same as it's been for the last year and a half. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, I see a hand up from Leah Drebin. Hi, thank you, Anne. Leah Drebin, community member. I just wanted to echo Mr. Handelman's concerns with the uh, restaffing program and that it does, does not align with communities' wants and needs or an evidence-based workforce. Um, also, in the long run, it's going to be significantly more expensive than other strategies, for example, to reduce gun violence or attain an evidence-based workforce. Uh, these uh, Restaffed officers are going to be coming in making roughly about $50 an hour versus new officers, roughly $32 an hour. PS3s is about um, almost $25 an hour to $29 an hour. So from a budgetary stance, um, it's going to be very costly, but they're only going to be contracted for two years. <laughs> and out of those two years, there's going to be some new training because well, since they've been retired, they're going to need to be trained on new police protocols or technology. Also, they're going to be coming in earning vacation and sick leave at the same rate that they retired out on. So they're gonna be also earning vacation and sick time at a higher rate and likely taking some of that vacation and sick time during those two years. So we're not gonna get two years of work out of them. Furthermore, there uh, is a certain socialization that happens within policing and that is junior officers cancel and help do the workload of senior officers, especially if they're uh, retired out as sergeants or lieutenants, let's say. And so even though they're coming back as an officer, they're not gonna be doing the same work as the junior officers. So I just wanted to uh, echo Mr. Handelman's concerns and really have us uh, rethink this before we invest in it. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, feedback. Is there anyone else that would like to offer a comment? And I would like to ask a question. Do we know for sure that they're gonna be rehiring police who we've already said we no longer can use in our community? But Stephanie, do you want to answer that? I don't know if uh, Deputy Chief Holmes in here to really discuss that, but obviously we want to screen them to the best of our abilities uh, from the mayor's office. And I've talked to Deputy Chief from, uh, we're going to set up, we want to set up a process to make sure that we only get people back that we can count on doing the job. I mean, uh, the comments before are correct. They are they are more expensive uh, out of the gate. It's not the it's not the best solution to be quite honest. But uh, in the short term, there's there's uh, there's a there's a lot of people that are going to be retired. A lot more people are going to be retiring and further aggravating the vacancies. 
And so those, we need to find a way to slow that down or stop that while we recruit uh, more police officers who can come in at that entry level and do the work at the rates that we were already discussing. Thank you. Uh, Barb, do you wanna ask your question? And, and before you do that, Gloria, does that answer your question or would you like to ask not, a follow not up? Really, not really. I think if we're gonna offer an incentive for the police not to, I would say, offer them not to retire early by paying them more rather than bringing in the same old problem that we thought we were rid of. It's dangerous in the community already. And the community's thoughts are not necessarily those of the police officers. And I know that they're not those of the police officers that um, have been let go or who have been put in different positions. So that's it. Can anyone address that part of her question? I think that's an excellent point. I'll just add that. Casey Fromm, would you like to, or Mary Claire? Just in terms of incentives to get people to stay as opposed to uh, using the retire rehire program? Yes. Um, that would be something that we would need to address through our collective bargaining. And uh, I think it is definitely an option. I don't know how many people would take advantage of it, but I like it. It would be cheaper than doing the retire rehire program to the city as a whole. Um, because then you wouldn't have people pulling a retirement out of fire, police, disability, and retirement, as well as out of the general fund. There's another question in the chat. It was, it was talking about how much does it cost to bring in a new person. Um, the new person alone is probably, you know, their actual cost out of pocket is probably during the 18 months of probation. We probably need about one hundred and twenty-five to one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars to pay that person, provide them benefits, and equip them. Um, but then I don't have a good estimate on how much money we spend on salaries related to training that person. Um, so within the first eighteen months, um, it's a bit of a push compared to a retire rehire. The retire rehire program that we have, which is in the current contract with PPA. Um, what it buys us is time. It speeds up our ability to put the people back into a ready to work on the street position compared to a new hire that will take like 18 months until they're able to work on their own. So I, hopefully that answers some of the questions. Is it possible, um, Gloria, I don't know if you have anything else, but I, I was wondering, is it possible to look into this idea, or is that something that does need to go through um, negotiation with the police union, or is there any ability to do that, follow up on that? Anything to do with uh, payer benefits has to go through the negotiation process with PPA. I, I do believe that the community is gonna look at this is, this is twice we're paying them to wreak havoc in our community. Twice we're paying them. Doesn't make very much sense to me. I guess our goal is to ensure that the people that we bring back under this program are not the ones that are gonna wreak havoc in your community because that's not what I want. And I think that it's been brought up by people already at this meeting that we've had people that we brought back under this program that blew up on our faces, all right? Mm -hmm. We need to do a better job of screening these people. We need to have very high standards. Um, so well, with that, I agree. Well, well, my last question is gonna be, uh, who's gonna police those police officers? Well, the first line would be the other police officers. And this goes to the ABLE training that I was talking about before. 
you know, the active bystanders being able to see when things are not being done correctly and reporting it. The public will be able to hold them accountable through the process of making complaints about their behaviors. And then ultimately, it's up to the chief's office to make sure that accountability exists for those officers once they're hired. I, I would just add it um, also the, the fit cog. Um, so you do have that community intervention um, oversight group. Um, and you have a, you know, Commissioner Hardesty mentioned in the comments, you have the additional um, oversight committee um, that will be formed uh, in the in the um, near term. Uh, so um, there are additional independent advisory bodies, um, just like PSEP, that are that are providing um, that are asking great questions, right? That like just what's happening right now. Um, I would also say that the logic um, from our office um, is that during times of crisis, you need people who know what their job is. We use this similar approach in the emergency coordination center uh, for COVID-19 response and recovery. You need logistics, you need operations, you need communications. Um, and so we were looking at um, as the burnout rate, right, as the retention rate is low for many of our city bureaus during this time of multiple crises, we need to make sure that we're building a culture of, of learning, of valuing our employees, right? And so we, we took that approach in COVID-19 response and recovery and looked at, okay, of the people who have recently retired, um, what would, uh, is there a kind of a streamlined way <laughs> bringing them back into the city so we can have more mobile vaccination clinics or mo more mobile testing centers um, because we do need the, to have people who know what their job is and can immediately tackle the daily crisis because unfortunately that is, as, as many of you know, right, and as many of you noted, that is just where we are. Um, but I hear the piece and Stephanie and I, Stephanie and I will bring it back and, and discuss it with, with Chief Rome about the need to include vetting and transparency about what that vetting can be. Um, so we make sure to respect um, this really, this really um, critical question. I have a question for the for the group or thoughts. Um, I just had an idea about is there any kind of program that would allow us to bring in um, individuals from other cities, other states, other municipalities, and maybe do like an internship where they get to try out and see if they like living here in Portland and maybe, you know, we might bring people in and kind of help them with a month's rent or something, you know, get established and see if they'd like to work for us. What about outside um, recruiting, you know, for officers that might already be trained, but just in another city or in another community, but they're already trained and just need another level of um, experience. That would be my first thing. And the second thing is my biggest concern about folks doing retirement is their mental health, their emotional health, and their physical well-being. Okay, um, I, I'm going to be learning more about the wellness program, but I did learn that a lot of your wellness programs are optional for officers, and that kind of concerns me because a lot of PTSD and other chronic anxiety disorders accumulated doing this work really don't get looked at. And so I'm just kind of asking if maybe you can, you know, um, add more of a mental health screening as well and make sure folks are okay because they may not even know they're not okay. That's kind of how it works in our world. So just some ideas I wanted to put out there about improving our workforce. Thank you. Are there any other comments? I have one, Ann. Um, are they looking at, as far as recruiting, can Chief Rom, um, do you guys look at the, like, cops in, who didn't make it, 
you know, looking at old applicants or guys that are working at like the airport or maybe people that are like security guards at uh, big functions like basketball games, you know, um, people that are in that type of security who have this type of security mode, mind thinking or want to be a police, but never really thinking that it could be a, you know, a, a option, but, you know, maybe if there's some other things that can, you know, bring down, you know, the, the MQs to bring in these people. Um, I was just wondering, are they looking in those types of areas? I think right now we don't have a lot of active recruiting going on in terms of um, going out and making individual contacts. I know that in the past that have been places they've looked. They've also looked at colleges and universities. Um, you know, the general run of the job fairs going to out of state. Uh, we've done recruiting uh, in California on the East Coast. Uh, we've been oh, I'm trying to remember the other states that we've been to over different times. Um, we. Um, I know, I think the Bureau of Human Resources is requesting two additional um, full-time employment recruiters to assist us in trying to do outreach uh, to find more police officer applicants. And we'll be moving an officer um, into that role. Um, we found that having at least one honest to goodness, just police officer is really good at being able to answer questions for new applicants because they want to know like, hey, cop to cop, what is this like? Or for laterals, hey, you tell me, what is this, uh, what is this place really all about? Um, and an officer from another jurisdiction that's already trained, um, we refer to them as laterals because they kind of lateral over. Um, they, they do bring some um, possible benefits, but they, they also, you have to go through the right hoops with the state to get them certified to be police officers in Oregon if they're from out of state. So sometimes they don't really, um, gain us a lot in terms of time before they're able to work on their own. Uh, and then, I mean, this is just me personally, um, you have to look for fit, you know, policing in a lot of parts of the United States is not what the people of Portland expect. And so you have to uh, find communities where you might have people um, that have similar values and goals for policing. Okay, thank you. Amy, is that your hand up again, or do you have another question or comment? Uh, sorry, no, I'm good. I got to lower it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I'll give this back to Lakiana. Yeah, we went we went a, a long ways around many things, but I think it's great we have a little extra time. Um, so kind of coming back to this report, um, what we're doing is voting on this uh, the quarterly update, which we we ran through. I'll go down the list of names. Um, Theo, thank. You. Uh, if you can text Taji one more time, get his vote on this, um, and then we just need everybody to vote on it. Honestly, I don't. I don't know why we got to vote on this, but we'll do it. Uh, Ann. Yes. And I also wanted to say um, if Theo could add the numbers of people at the meetings, that'd be terrific. For you guys. Uh, Amy. Come back to you, Byron. Yes. Uh, Gloria? Yes. Tia? Yes. Amy, are you there? Yes, is uh, my answer. Uh, uh, myself, yes. And uh, do we have Taji's vote? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll come back to it. Um, but that concludes everything on our agenda for um, today, just kind of in recap, let me just pull this back up. Um, we passed the um, codification document. We passed the recommendation on the CRC report uplifting their work. And we also passed the quarterly, well, actually we haven't quite passed the quarterly report because we're waiting on Taji's vote. Um, we deferred the metrics discussion until we have a, 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 the strategic plan 
uh, conversation in place, which is still noted we want to have done by the November PSEP meeting. Um, so that's an ambitious goal. Uh, we're looking at changes to the steering committee, including having it um, uh, led by the co-chairs of each of the subcommittees. Um, and uh, that kind of wraps up our meeting for this month. I would encourage you all to attend next month um, and bring a friend, bring someone else. There's uh, Policing in this city is um, a huge topic, and this is a body that uh, does great work around it. And as you can see just from tonight, there's a lot of different um, uh, points and in, in, of intersection and opportunities to learn. Our youth subcommittee needs uh, new members. We're going to be needing new PSEP members, especially in November. So if, if you're listening to this call tonight and you're like, hey, this seems like work that I would like to do, please apply. If, if Theo or Claudia can drop the application link into the chat, that would be great. Um, if you know somebody who's passionate about these issues, um, please have them apply as well. And we just thank everybody for their input tonight. I want to thank uh, the mayor's office staff for being here, Commissioner Hardesty's staff, um, the Portland Police Bureau for their time as well, our community members for all your input and believing in our work. We will see you all soon. Can't forget our staff. Can't forget our, um, our uh, interpreters. Um, open signal behind the scenes, keeping all of our tech work together. Uh, have a safe night, everyone. And we will see you in October. All right. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Bye.